For this uh, last chance qualifier, Anthony Lowry and Dave Shields, and uh, they both looked pretty strong. So I'm really excited to see this finals. And we're going to watch from Dave Shields' point of view for the dark draft. Yeah, so we'll start by watching Dave draft, and then we'll obviously watch them play, and we'll see who is going to be moving on to the championships. Yep. So there's a lot of money on the line because tomorrow we'll be giving away $50,000 in tomorrow's championship, and then we'll give away another $50,000 in the summer for the digital championship, yeah. and this this win here will qualify for both. Yeah, it's a huge, huge game, and they, uh, they both know it. There's Dave on the left and uh, Anthony on the right. Still shuffling up. Making sure it's super randomized before we start. So this is Dark Draft. Want to go over Dark Draft a little bit just to sure. catch everybody up? So this is uh, the, the limited format for Epic. Uh, they will each look at five cards. They'll pick one and pass four to their opponent. You'll look at four, choose two, and then discard two permanently. That'll be three cards from that first pack. You do that nine more times, you end up with 30 cards and you play all of them. Yeah, so you're building your deck as you draft. It's not like you draft and then take your pool and draft. That's your deck. Right. And th that's one of the beauty of Epic is you can play with any 30 cards. There's no dead cards and yes. the, every card functions. It's just a question of drafting cards that function really well in tandem. Exactly, yeah. Uh, both of these players will probably have uh, at least three, maybe even all four factions in their uh, dark draft. So, yeah, putting so the decks, uh, the packs you don't actually now. see what your opponent's drafting, but when you pass them four cards, you can get an idea like, oh, they're likely to take you know these cards that I couldn't get because I had to first pick this other card. But you never know what they might have first picked. Um, and then when they pass to you, and you let's say you see a bunch of good red cards, you're like, oh, well, maybe they first picked a good green card, and, but now they know I'm going to take these red cards. It's, it's very yeah. interesting format, actually. All right, the packs are ready to go. All right, so looking forward to seeing what's this in Dave's first pack. Yeah, we All right, here we go. We're watching Dave Shields. Some nice green cards there. Looks like he's going to decide between either green or yellow. It looks like, I, I think that Draka is the kind of card you could build around. I, I don't know if... Yeah, both, uh, both the wild cards in the pack require loyalty too, but they're both very strong. So Although Justice yeah. Prevails could be an archetype if you build around that. Absolutely. But he did yep. take Draka, which uh, that can be a real game breaker, especially if your opponent goes yep. with a bunch of... Um, and, and takes the Justice Prevails or goes into the, t the token deck, that Draka is going to be strong. All right, so he got past four cards. There's Urgent Messengers, which is good in any kind of deck. There's a couple good red cards. That word is summoning, though, that, especially as the only zero looks really strong. Zeros are definitely a premium in Dark Draft. And, uh, so, yeah, yeah he, so he took uh, the zero plus he took the Urgent Messengers. So, uh, so far, uh, I'm uh, impressed with his picks because yeah. he agrees with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, the, this is uh, pack two. So he's uh, got, he, so far he's taken a red and a green card, and there's probably the best red loyalty card and the best green loyalty card. In yeah. This. So it's this either going to be, gonna be the T-Rex or the Angel of Death, uh, I would think. Um, I think that uh, T-Rex, Raging T-Rex is probably yep. the best green card. In so I, I'm yeah. all, all with him taking that, especially he, since he's committed to loyalty already with Draka, Dragon exactly. Tyrant. Exactly. He also had T-Rex in his semifinals deck, so... Yeah, definitely, he, he was deep into wild there as well. And so with all that green loyalty, he's going to want to take uh, more green. So the Pyromancer and the Winds of Change are pretty tempting. Um, and I, I don't think either of these uh, good cards are, these yellow cards are good enough to not take the Winds of Change. Yeah, it's going to be close. He also had Royal Escort. Escort in his yeah yeah he takes it again. He had it in he likes that card. He had it in oh, okay. his uh, semifinals deck. So. Uh, taking oh, it again. Oh, wow. Now I can take Flame Strike in his already gr heavy green deck. Um, although Hunting Pack is a surprisingly good card. I've been yeah. pretty impressed with Hunting Pack. Hunting Pack has been a standout but as Flame well. Flame Strike's eight damage. It's what a finisher. Like, I, I, don't, I have trouble imagining him passing on the Flame Strike. Yeah. Yeah, he so goes for it. At this point, he's locked into f base green. It's just a question if he's going to have a heavy second color or it just splash. Wow. Oh, wow. The Scars so, and the Wolf Spike. So he could take uh, the Hound of Draka, Scar Hound of Draka, because then he's just saying, yeah. I'm just going to take every green card. And he wow. did, they yep. took that and the Wolf Spite. So he's, he's just going to take every green card he sees, I imagine, unless there's an amazing card that's not in green. 
and uh, I think that he, things are shaping up great for him so far. Yeah, the start of Dave's dark draft has been very strong. Loyalty 2 and the Loyalty X card. Okay, so they're reviewing... Yeah, the into pack card. 3. We should, we should have said that. Uh, into pack 3 and into <coughs> pack 7 review periods for dark draft. Right, so basically he's got the two gold good cards and then he's just got a bunch of wild and then the word of summoning. So uh, looks like... It, he's probably not going to be doing any uh, loyalty in Sage. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, you know, it's still not too late to t pick a loyalty card for um, for good. Um, and obviously yeah. he's going to take every playable green card he sees, yeah. I would imagine. He also moved the uh, Word of Summoning to the front. Just look in there. He has two zeros. That's one of the things I always look for as well. I count the number of zeros over all my factions. That makes uh, a lot of sense. Just, uh, just at each, at each, at each re review period. Right, because it, it, it's great to draw lots of cards, but if you can only play one card per turn, then it limits you. So mm -hmm. now is he thinking about taking a zero here, maybe? Yeah, no wild cards in this pack, so we'll see which direction so he goes he, outside of wild. There's two uh, pretty solid uh, zeros, although Deadly Raid's a great finisher. Um, so he could just take Deadly Raid for the finishing power, but, uh, you know, he's got... The Revolt, which is a solid zero, and he's got the Rebel Fighter, which is a solid zero. Oh, he went yep. with the... All right, very with good. the Deadly Raid. Which I, I, I totally approve of that, because uh, I've won a lot of games with Deadly Raid. As sure. with, between Deadly Raid and Flame Strike, he's already yeah. pretty well set for finishers. Yep. Although it's hard to have too many finishers. <laughs> Absolutely. So Mythic you're thinking monster. he's at least taking the Mythic Monster right. here, right? That's that's a yes. Now he's got to look. What are what of the other three? And it's a little tough. Drinker Blood, more of a combo card. Helion requiring loyalty. I think Angel of Death's a great pick here because he's already thinking about yellow as his secondary color. And even if yep. you don't loyalty it, like ambush, gain it's five, airborne, gain five. Uh, this is going to be a tough pick as well. He's got some zeros. Uh, but he's also got the smash and burn. So it's it's tough to pass a noble unicorn when you've been taking some uh, good cards. Uh, but smash and burn, as you know, it's hard. <laughs> it's, I, I'd be very shocked if it's not one of those two. He has been flipping frantic digging and smash and burn at the front. Yep. Smash Sticking to the strategy. Yeah, I mean, when yeah. you've got that much green loyalty and it's such high quality loyalty, you want to yeah. make sure. And Smash and Burn comes with an effect when you're that deep into wild. That is like a exactly. zero. Exactly. Extra wow. effect. Wow, so th this is, I, I think, I mean, he likes zeros, so he might take the hands from a blow, but I think this is pretty straightforward because there's two excellent green cards here. The Mighty Blow and the Triceratops are both excellent green cards, in my opinion. But indeed, he does like his zeros, so he took the hands from yeah. below instead of the Mighty Blow. I think uh, Mighty Blow is a little underrated as finisher, but he does already have some finishers. Yes, and again, looking for zeros there, he still has very few, and yep, yep. I'm sure he's looking for more. So um, the Sea Titan's amazing no matter what colors you are in, but there is a, a reasonable green card if you want to stick to the plan in the Rampaging Worm. Uh, I personally would take the Sea Titan... It's going to be hard to pass that Sea Titan. Doesn't require any loyalty. Very, very strong out of Sage. And yeah. He, indeed. <laughs> yeah, because it yeah, do, doesn't really matter if he ever gets another blue card that's going to go a long way on all its own. Oh, I love the dragon yep. here, the yes. silver dragon. Yep. And he's looking for the forked lightning maybe to get in some more green. Yeah, silver dragon forked lightning here. Although he, he does seem to be looking at that inner piece a lot. <laughs> Which, to he, be fair, is a solid card. He's taking. Oh, oh, he's having trouble deciding. All right, he t he took he the did. dragon and the fort lighting. Yeah, so it's it, clearly he's going uh, wild, base wild with some good support for gold. So I don't think it'd be crazy for him to pick up gold loyalty at some point. He could. He he's getting to that point now where he's he could take that if um, one of those came by that he wanted. So I, I think without the red loyalty uh, for the summoner, I think he's going to take the two green cards here. Although banishment's fine. Um, but clearly, I think Jungle Queen's a solid pick here. Anytime your tribute draw a card, you know, and it helps yeah. all his other I mean, green cards. He's, he's got Mythic Monster as well already in the deck. Oh, he doesn't go with the Jungle Queen. Wow. I was, I was surprised. Oh, yeah, a lot of people zeros. think it's so small that it's not worth it. But again, yeah, it looks like he's going to be taking two zeros. Just a question of which two. Um, Rescue Griffin and... Yeah. The yep. Corpse Monk? Sol yeah. Solid picks. Yeah, I like those zeros. He definitely was looking for more zeros as well, so that's a good pickup for him. Yeah, I'll be very interested to see what his opponent's deck's like, because uh, his deck's shaping up quite well. Review period here after pack seven. 
So it'll be interesting to see if uh, he tries to pick up some more gold cards to go with his Angel of Light. Um, but at the moment, it looks like he's got a good chance of supporting loyalty in both. Um, although, obviously, with uh, Skaros, Hound of Draka, you want to yeah. focus a lot on green. Um, <clears throat> but he's got some nice burn for finishing. He's got some card draw. He's got some ambush. He's got the deadly raid. He's got some free cards, a, a decent amount of cards that uh, draw you cards when they come into play with the tribute. Um, he's yeah. he's off to a really great start, I think. Yeah, I think he has four or five zeros. So in these last three packs, in Dave's position, I, I, I would say the wild, the loyalty is there, the power is there. Probably just looking to pick up a couple more zeros to fill out this deck, but it's looking really good. Yeah, yeah. With definitely still giving high priority for the wild cards. And there are some zeros. Oh, and a Thought Plucker. Yeah, wow. I mean, I'd hate to pass my opponent a Thought Plucker. Yeah, that's for I, sure. uh, I can't see Dave passing a Thought Plucker here. It's going to be hard. Oh, look at him shaking the cards. He's like, I'm looking for <laughs> he, zeros. He's wishing he could have that courageous soul or that wither. But indeed, yeah. he takes Thought Plucker. And, uh, and that's uh, an exciting pick, I think. And he's not happy about passing Anthony uh, lots of zeros. Yeah. The Wither and the Consume him in, in that pack. And he might have even been a little tempted by the High King himself, but he's probably not too worried about Anthony. That's a great him. pickup for his deck. The Cave Troll. Zeros on color for Wild. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a great pickup for Dave. And then perhaps take the Winter Fairy, because uh, get that card draw. Yeah, Winter Fairy. Or the Demon. The Demon. We'll see here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's huh. some more zeros. Yeah, Siren Song and well, the final task Watchful is a pretty gargoyle. powerful card. I, I think that Watchful Gargoyle also for the Angel and of Light. And it's on co color yeah. for him. Yeah, the Siren Song also very powerful. Looking for more zeros. He knows he's low. Oh, he likes that final task. He's thinking about final tasking like uh, the T Rex or <laughs> Draka yeah. or. But indeed, yep. he, he ends up taking the Watchful Gargoyle. Yeah. Oh, there's some nice picks there <laughs> on color. Uh, it, I mean, yeah, I think you just take the ones that are on color because the Chamberlain's a solid card, and uh, obviously yeah. Fire Tyrants uh, or Fire Spirits. Excellent. Yeah, it's a it's a little tough. I don't know if he has the life gain. Very hard uh, to pull off with uh, Karkin Limited. Sure, but you know but you you still get a good body and some health, right? Yeah, still a nine twelve. <laughs> That lash here. Yeah. When he's got cards card. like Mythic Monster and Ra or right, Raging T-Rex already. Yeah. I like uh, the look of that lash. Also, uh, if I have that... Some I don't people wanna... like Wave of Transformation so much they take it over anything, but uh, I, I personally think Lash is the pick here. Yeah. He might be... He is kind of deciding, but... Yeah. Indeed, he took the lash. Yeah. I think that's a great fit for his deck. Yep. Also, he has the Thought Plucker, so he doesn't want to pass the lash. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he doesn't want his opponent to be able to take his Thought Plucker. Pack Alpha... Uh, so and all of these are on color for him, but Pack Alpha is the most important because it's wild. But uh, he's got to decide if the other cards perform yeah. an important function in his deck or not. Resurrection, even you know, as a draw to quell, as a board wipe, a couple choices here with the Pack Alpha. Definitely, Took definitely Pack Alpha pack and the Alpha. Resurrection. Seems solid. Yep. Yeah, he might assess at this point. I think he's a little low on draw twos as well, so that really helps fill that out. Yeah, it's, with his it's, big it's, monsters. It's, it's uh, hard to say no to draw twos that are in color. Yeah, and he found he found an, I think enough good cards to uh, for that royal escort for that angel of light to be that second color. Wow! So he ended up not taking the fire spirit. He took the two blue cards out of that pack. The the fire spirit and the chamberlain. He burned them. Uh, it, wow. When he's reviewing his cards, yeah. wow! Because he has traditionally been setting aside the two cards he took and then burning the other two, and he right. set aside the two blue cards. So that's a little shocking. Like, I mean, with that much green, like, I, I really don't understand not taking fire spirit yeah. there. That that. Wow. So it'll be interesting to see uh, what his opponent's yep. decks like. Uh, Anthony uh, passed some interesting cards there and had yeah. some interesting cards passed to him. Um, I think there's a decent chance that uh, Anthony is in at least one different color. Like, you know, because yeah. a lot of green was being monopolized yeah. and a lot of green was being passed. 
Yeah, very, very, uh, Dave saw very little sage, very little blue. So uh, we'll have to see what Anthony has come up with. But uh, the, the the sage cards are also really powerful. Well, and keep so. in mind, he did pass the Angel of Death. Right, which uh, could have gotten yes. Anthony into, into... We could see all four factions here play out. The uh, the evil and the sage against Dave's good and wild. Yeah, so which would that be would make sense. very cool. Because, yeah. um, uh, you know, he, he got past the fire spirit. He You know, he didn't take it, but he got past it, yeah. which, you know, is a very good card for someone who's going green. Um, I believe he got past Scar Scaros, Hound of Draka. Yeah, with the wolf so, bite. Uh, that right. really solidified him early. So, so there's a good chance that his opponent's not going heavy green if he's passing those cards. Yeah. Um, so, uh, again, we could easily see... Um, yeah, and he passed a lot of uh, good cards, you know, uh, uh, yellow cards or gold cards. Yeah. So uh, I think we could easily see all four colors represented, as you say. Um, although, again, he took those last two blue cards after already having a Winter Fairy and a, um, <clears throat> excuse me, a Sea Titan. So maybe he's actually hoping to hit loyalty I on one of those? Think, uh, yeah, I think he has at least four Sage cards. So with one of those, he actually can, in certain <laughs> circumstances, <laughs> uh, pull off loyalty. It is possible with the, the Lycomancer. Yeah. He, he, could, he yep. could hit loyalty. Yeah. I mean, Lycomancer is not terrible without loyalty. It just seems terrible compared to a Fire Spirit if you don't have loyalty. Right. Um, but uh, it depends on what his opponent has, because like, sometimes you just really need to get rid of something, and, and the Lycomancer can be good for that, especially they have to get rid of it, because then it can get rid of something over and over again. Yeah. Yeah. There were, uh, that was, that was a really, it, it was, Dave was able to find where he wanted to go pretty quickly. I would say the beginning of that draft for him, there's a lot of drafts that can start and you're trying to find where to go, but he was able to take the draft at a start and he just stayed right on path the whole time. Uh, I'd be very happy with that, uh, pool. Uh, if yeah, I was, uh, so it'll be Dave interesting to see if he's got enough card draw. I think he probably does because he's got the... Thought Plucker, he's got the Winter Fairy, he's got a couple Draw Twos, yeah. he's got the Raging T-Rex. I was going to say, Raging T-Rex, uh, <laughs> and it's, pretty incredible. he seems to have an okay selection of zeros. Like He's for he's even got a decent amount of zero moves. He's got the Wolf Spite, he's got the Lash, You know, he's uh, <clears throat> got the Hands from Below. Yeah, the, the, there was a couple of packs there, too. He got the Rescue Griffin, the Watchful Gargoyle. Yeah, he did. He filled out those zeros in the end, and I think he was just shy of ten, uh, which is a number I try to, if I can, like that's, if I can get 10, that's uh, always a number I try to go for. And, and he's he got a close lot of size end. between like the mythic monster, the raging T-Rex, he's got multiple dragons. These were the burns? Okay. Oh, interesting. So we got to take a look at the cards they burned. So early that Justice Prevails was not picked up by Anthony. Neither was the Xanos. These are all cards that are in the... Right, which burn. suggests that he's not in super heavy red. Um, and uh, we can also confirm yeah. that I'm uh, about the Chamberlain Kark and the Fire Spirit. Uh, yep, Drinker of Blood, White Dragon, Time Walker. All right, the players are ready. Uh, so we are going to move here to game one. Right, and we can confirm they burn Chamberlain Kark and, and the Fire, Fire Spirit. Spirit. Yes, yeah. no, you saw shocking. that. You're correct. It is a surprise. It almost feels like he put them in, accidentally put them in the wrong pile or something. <laughs> but yeah, no, he very deliberately moved those two to the side. So we are. All right. So uh, one of the cool things about Epic is the Mulligan rule, and so you can pay health to Mulligan cards. And so Anthony has Mulligan one card, so he'll be starting at twenty nine, and so he burned one card to the bottom and drew a different card off the top of his deck. Yep. Looks like Dave has Mulligan two cards. Yep. This is one of the things I love about Epic. Uh, every game, you start with the same amount of cards as your opponent. You just get to choose how much life you want to lose to sculpt that hand to start. Right, right. All right, yep. so it looks like Dave's going first, and uh, he's playing his Triceratops. Yep. And Triceratops, uh, just like uh, Raging T-Rex and so many of the cards in Wild, great establishing champion, just something to do on turn one. So Anthony just played one of my favorite draw twos, uh, Ancient Chant, which yep. not only drew him two now, but can draw more later, either if he recycles it away or he pays um, a gold to bring it back to his hand. Yep, and I think I see a Warrior Golem, which is loyalty to and Sage, which we, uh, you know, with seeing so little from our side, 
So you, you went ahead sense. and just plagued to get rid of the Triceratops so you didn't feel like dealing with a 10-10 with Breakthrough, breakthrough. <laughs> which I can understand why he might yeah. feel that way. And there's that Warrior Golem, which is in <clears throat> Anthony's hand. So Dave has a decent amount of ambush, so you following up a plague with a, a real escort, at least you know he's already starting the turn with a threatened play. But Anthony decided, okay, I guess it's time for me to put up my Warrior Golem. Because even right. if he just throws the Warrior Golem in front, he'll be able to recycle and draw an extra card off right. that Ancient po Chant. Possibly even two with, uh, with yeah, exactly. Like you're, yeah. Uh, yep. Recycle plus the Ancient Chant. So uh, Dave gained three health from his Royal Escort, and because uh, it also has that as an ally ability in addition to Tribute, when he plays more gold cards, he'll be able to gain more health, three health for every one. Plus, all of his champions not named Royal Escort have Untargetable, right. so um, perhaps the plague was used too early because now other targeted removal won't, won't be effective except against the Royal Escort. Oh, we might actually see it here. I think... There might be some Dave has, sage loyalty. He That's has sage loyalty. And Anthony right now, I mean, he's like, I didn't pass you almost any sage. How do you have that? <laughs> like, I, I thought I was the sage player. He's yeah, that, that is amazing. Dave just pulled that so, off. So maybe he knows something I didn't when he uh, took the two uh, yeah. sage cards instead of the fire spirit. Because uh, suddenly he found the he's moment got some to use pressure it. on him. Yeah. So now yeah. what's <laughs> the guy's got to make a decision about his gold and about the warrior golem. Yeah, the the one good piece of information for Anthony is he still has his gold, so he can respond to what's going on. Right. But the royal escort complicates things, potentially. Yeah, and it's, it's like a lightning rod. Uh, he can't target that knight right now. He, he'd he have to deal with royal escort before he can use any targeted removal on the knight. So this is a very aggressive start for Dave. Oh, that's very interesting. Cool. So he's... Going to, yeah, that's Rox's curse. So he's ah, going to. So he's going to break, break his zero his to own, put a demon into play. He's breaking his own warrior golem to put a demon into play and recycling away the ancient chant. And he's going to draw two cards here. Yeah, doing that. Bef looks like before blocking with the knight, because the knight turns the demon into a wolf token. I think there it is. Yeah, there it comes. But also, he still ha Anthony still has his gold available. Right. Oh, so he can't do that. He he yeah. doesn't realize the royal escort's uh, stopping him from killing the knight. Yeah. Yeah, royal escort can be very frustrating yep. to play against. <laughs> Dave has set that play up nicely. Yeah, Anthony there thought that he had enough uh, from the Fires of Rebellion to finish off the knight, but so the Royal Escort says just, no. Uh, throwing a hunting pack out there, and it looks like he might not have loyalty for the the right. hunting uh, raptors. Excuse me. Didn't see it get expended, so just... So he could use, now that it's his turn, he could use the hunting raptors and something else to kill the Royal Escort, right. but then he still has the yeah. knight to deal with. He could have a lightning strike, the zero, uh, that deals five to a target champion, plus the hunting raptor, but he's going to he's gonna need something here. Well, and he could use the yeah. fires of rebellion, but like, and, and, yeah. it it's, seems that's quite an investment to get rid of the secondary threat. <laughs> exactly. Again, Royal Escort being a, a massive pain. So it yeah. looks like he's considering... Looks like that went to... To the dome. Yep. Yeah, because he's looking like he's going to loyalty up his uh, murderous necromancer, get some blockers. So we are getting to see all four factions, the battle here. Even though, um, from Anthony's side, he's uh, still unaware Dave has a uh, wild deck. <coughs> yeah. After he saw the loyalty too, so... <laughs> No, um, well, he did see the Triceratops, right. but but yeah, he doesn't necessarily see uh, a potential Scaros or Raging T-Rex in the future. So the Murderous Necromancer brought three zombie friends with him, so he's got plenty of blockers for now, and if the Murderous Necromancer gets online, we'll be able to say goodbye to the Royal Escort. So suddenly there's a little bit of pressure on Dave to deal with the Necromancer and the Hunting Raptors, because in the meantime, those zombies are a bit of a wall. And he... he Played Resurrection as a draw to. I wonder if he remembered his gain three life. Uh, I think he should be at 30 from the Royal Escort, but he's still at 27. You make a good point. Well, sometimes it takes yep. the judges a little yeah. while to update the score for us. Yep. 
he goes ahead and word of summonings. But yeah, he's digging for answers. He drew two, and then I took another one, drew another one with the word of summoning recycle effect. Okay, he's going to his turn. Get to see one more yep. card. All right, so he does have a pyromancer, and I think a wolf spite, uh, and he does have the lycomancer. So if he, I think he has enough blue to loyal to the lycomancer, which lycomancering the murderous necromancer seems like it'd be pretty good here. Yep. So he had Both no hesitation. He had no hesitation in spending his gold before attacking before, but this time he's decided he's going to see if he can get a reaction to the the demon token because yeah. trading it for two zombies is fine forcing a, a zombie to chump is fine and if he blocks with a murderous necromancer suddenly the wolf spite gets a lot better exactly <clears throat> yeah it looks like a free block with the murderous necromancer but very dangerous for that to just take four we know he has the wolf spite in hand so we'll see how anthony blocks just a chump from the zombie yeah, his focus is on making sure the Necromancer and the Hunting yeah. Raptors survive, if at all possible. Yeah, I like that block. You can block with just the zombie or with two there. I mean, ba basically, if yeah. all of his zombies die this turn, but his Necromancer exactly. lives, he's pretty happy. Yeah. Also keeping those zombies back for blocks against Dave's yeah. other champions. Yeah, you really yep. need to block the knight. <laughs> yep. Two separate attacks. Neither player has played their gold. So now he's probably going to sit back on that uh, Royal Escort. And indeed, yep. he is. And he's getting a Lycomancer into play and saying goodbye to the Merchant yep. Necromancer. Gets banished and replaced with a wolf. With, I think, four or five Seems sage like cards. Trade. He's got the two loyalty to sage cards, and he's made them work. <laughs> so it's dark draft. Suddenly he's looking like some kind of genius for not taking the fire spirit no, Really, in. really great pickup. Recognizing he had some loyalty twos in sage and had just in, and, and drafted just enough to be able to play So them. he had, like, four, and he drew, like, all four. <laughs> that, that, maybe that's what that mulligan for two is all about. Make sure yeah. he gets his uh, oh, sage that's loyalty. Great. That's great to see. Uh, Anthony with the Noble Unicorn. So now suddenly the pendulum is swung. So Anthony's really wishing he had that plague back because you still have to get rid of the Royal Escort before you can get rid of the Lycomancer. And the Lycomancer is a real problem. Yeah, this board is clogging up fast. Yeah, I mean, he can dig now. He's got the Noble Unicorn out. So if he played a good card, he, he could uh, draw multiple cards, potentially, depending on what he plays. Although I don't see a, a good card that costs a gold in his hand, which limits his options a little bit. But a uh, Kong, though. Oh, that's excellent, because then he yeah. can get rid of the Royal Escort at least. And, be a good start. Yep. And frankly, he, then he could use the Hunting Raptor plus a, like the Wither, potentially, to get rid of the Lycomancer. Wow, this has uh, already been a pretty uh, back-and-forth game. So he's testing the waters, throwing his wolf out into the attack zone there. Seeing if uh, Dave will make his life easier by blocking with the Royal Escort. Yeah, earlier, Anthony revealed that Fires of Rebellion and realizing he, he had to take it back. And this spot, I, I mean, I think Dave knows about the Fires of Rebellion, but this, this wolf if the Royal Escort blocked, opens up Fires of Rebellion as a way to get rid of that Royal Escort. Although, frankly, I think you want to play the Kong here and save Fires of Rebellion yeah. for your opponent's turn. Like, exactly. A big part of Fire of Rebellion's value to him here is it's something he can play on his opponent's turn. Where Kong or, can't. Exactly. Yeah. And Dave chose not to block with the zombie going to 25. Yeah, there's the Kong. Kong gets rid of the Royal Escort. Got to get rid of so it sometime. So the question is whether he will... So uh, that was a little bit risky doing those attacks first because potentially Dave could have killed the Hunting Raptors during the attacks, right? And But fortunately for Anthony, he didn't. So Hunting Raptors could still combine with Wither uh, to get rid of the Lycomancer. You know, and you don't really... He's got three beautiful champions out there that he doesn't want turned into a wolf, so... <laughs> I right. think that's uh, worth going for. If he doesn't have a wither, uh, he can also just get rid of the demon token. 
with the I think he showed us a wither when he loyaltyed the murderous necromancer. Yes. Yep. That is no, what that, that is. is. You're yep. right. Yeah, he doesn't want oh, that. Oh, but to he ended up using it. consume, which, which is he got, similar to wither. He got both of those in the pack with thought plucker. Oh, wow. Okay. That was what was so hard for Dave. Yeah, passing consume and wither. And it looks I, like I Anthony took both. He still got the wither for later. Yep. So Anthony, after struggling with the royal escort, uh, has suddenly really taken uh, a bit of control of the board. Yeah, Kong is incredibly powerful in both limited and, and constructed, and seeing it's uh, seeing although it here, attacking with the zombie yeah. tokens looking less good now that it won't be around to block the knight, because you definitely don't want to block the knight with Kong. I agree. Yeah, I mean, you know, not that he doesn't have options, but. I might have been a little extra aggressive. I'm not sure it was worth the two points, but, you know, uh, he's here for a reason, so <laughs> yep. we'll see. Dave, looking, yep, he's going to decide. Nope. <laughs> Fooled me. The wolf's bite here. All right, so he can follow that up with Pyromancer to finish it off if he wants. Targeting the raptors, as well as having a chump blocker for this noble unicorn that's what he chooses. <clears throat> okay, so he recycles, gets a wolf. Wolf spite certainly does oh, a lot for his a free hands card. from below. That'll be six. Oh, sweet. So that's he'll kill it is. without yeah. even spending his gold. That's great. And get zombie tokens into play. Yep. Again, the pendulum might swing. Oh, interesting. So he chose to let Anthony have uh, priority to wither, but... That gives uh, him another shot to do something useful. There's two damage on that noble unicorn. He can actually choose hands from below or this uh, pyromancer. Wow, I, I am kind of shocked if hands below is not the, the option, the choice uh, here. Right, actually, yes, because he's already also dealt damage to the raptors, so he'll actually be able to do both. Get rid of the raptors. Right, and then he can actually. block the noble unicorn, the pyromancer, and hands below from below. Oh, uh, he's cleaning up the board pr rather quickly. It's been a very just, back and forth game. I was going to say, just when I thought Anthony was taking control. Yeah, yeah both of these players are, are really sharp here. It's been a really great back and forth. And a revolt. Oh, wow. This, is, this match is really showing why all these free cards are so important. Because you think of Epic as a game where, oh, I've only got one gold, I can play one card per turn, and yet we're seeing, you know, two, three, four cards played in a turn, yes. and, and that wouldn't be possible yeah, without and, all of the free cards. Absolutely. The zeros are so powerful, and we've seen multiple, three or four already played this turn during this combat. So Revolt, <laughs> and put a human into play. The gargle, and he still could play the hands from below. Right. He's got Lash in his hand. Right, picking up the Lash. So that revolt will make it with a noble unicorn and pyromancer uh, trade because of the hands from blow will finish off that. Yes, the be with the hands from blow. But uh, yeah, so at least Anthony now has a soldier who can block the the knight. Yeah, which explains his aggressiveness, knowing he had revolt in hand for the knight. Yeah, I mean. I'd rather not force my hand on the revolt. I'd, uh, right. I'd rather have the zombie back, especially now there's all sorts of things the zombie could block. But, you know, um, I guess when you're ahead, uh, it's sometimes tempting to be very aggressive. Yeah. And uh, yeah. as we see champions in Epic die so quickly, like sometimes getting your damage in while your champion's still around can be the way to go. So we're thinking the soldier's going to take one for the team here. Yeah. Indeed, he does. Yep. Knight, only a 10-8, but its ability, not something Kong wants to block. It turns into a wolf before it gets a chance to do any damage. Yeah, so. he, 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 he yeah. fights a lot, and he wins fights. Yeah. So it looks like there's a pause in combat. We know Dave has the lash in hand. He might be deciding before damage here. Let's see if he wants to do a lot of breakthrough. Chooses nice. not to. Yep. Holding on to that lash for now. He's flying over Kong's head yep. with the gargoyle. He's got plenty of potential blockers for Kong here. Or he could try attacking one at a time and get a few points of damage past yeah. Kong. So he's going to go ahead with Winterfair and draw a card. 
So he's building up a bit of an Air Force. One of the things I like about Dave's deck, he's got a pretty strong Air Force in his deck. Yeah. Still has his dragons and stuff. Not only the dragons, but also the Angel of Light. A lot of airborne. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Fires of Rebellion. Finally gets some work done. <laughs> what he wanted to do a long time ago, he finally gets to do. And oh, Amnesia. Amnesia. Yep. And, and I think Amnesia was there at this point just because he really wants to recycle because uh, right. I don't think Dave's discard pile was particularly dangerous there or, and he wasn't in danger of drawing out his deck. Yeah. But uh, Anthony sort of sees how the game's going and, and wants to dig into his deck a bit more. <clears throat> Obviously, yeah. if Dave gets his cave troll, he might feel, or plays his lash, Anthony might feel a little bit of regret about using the amnesia so quickly. Yeah. <clears throat> Trying to filter through his deck, definitely looking for something. It does also keep Dave off recycle, at least maybe for a couple of turns sometimes. But yeah, pops off the playing amnesia. all these free cards has uh, really hurt Anthony's hand size now. He's down only three cards in hand. Um, so he, he, it might have been even tempting to save the amnesia as a draw too. Gonna start with Knight of Shadows. Rebuild his hand a little bit and uh, work on Dave's yep. hand. Tribute draw a card and Dave will have to discard here. And he discards that lash. But something can he can get back later. Yeah, Lash has recall uh, recall for one gold, mm -hmm. so he could spend the gold to return it to his hand if he needs it. But uh, at the moment I think he's focusing on uh, flying through the air with his airborne champions. Because, yeah, if Winter Fairy hits, it can uh, draw him a, another card and, and really become a bit of an engine if uh, Anthony doesn't have a good answer for it. So Anthony does have a way to kill the Winter Fairy in his hand, but if he's only oh, adding to his Air Force yep. with uh, Angel Light... There's a great example. Angel Light only gains five there, but it's still it, an it ambush, five, airborne... It's, wow, it's interesting more he pressure. didn't attack with Kong there. Like, I mean, sure, he throws a zombie in front, but, like... He won't get out the zombies off the board by not attacking. Right. Oh, Spike Trap. That's a very yep. efficient answer to Winter Fairy because now they both draw a card. Right. But uh, they both still have their goals. So, yeah, I, I think that's uh, that's pretty nifty for Anthony. Yeah, don't want to let Winter Fairy run wild because that can end up being a lot of, a lot of cards. So Anthony deals with it, <coughs> making sure it's just a draw two for Dave. And that, that way, Anthony can save uh, his uh, Necrovirus for the Angel of Light if he wants. Angel of Light coming over. Uh, now, Dave did just use that Hands from Below, which is so good against Knight of Shadows. So we'll have to see what Dave's defense is against the Unblockable. A lot of evasion in this game. Yeah, fortunately for Dave, he's at 30. And uh, apparently Kong is sidelined, which helps a little bit, yeah. too. So, uh, and a what Anthony doesn't know about is the amount of uh, direct damage that uh, Dave has in his deck. So, you know, he could be building towards the Flame Strike in his hand. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on that Flame Strike as the game continues because that is the finisher. Clock, yeah. yeah. Or, uh, it, see, another reason why it'd be good for Anthony to be t attacking with Kong and getting rid of these zombies is what about Deadly Raid? Like, if he lets the zombies sit there and suddenly Deadly Raid and, like, what? <laughs> the game right. is over at the point. <coughs> so he could play the Silver Dragon here, draw a card, and get rid of the zombie, which seemed, and add to his Air Force. And indeed, yes. that's what's happening. <coughs> so uh, and, and the race is not looking great for Anthony at the moment. Yeah. Um, and, and Dave just picked up a Fork Lightning, which is combined really, with the Flame Strike. It's a, also just a great pickup Massive here. clock. Dealing with the Knight of Shadows and Five to the Face, that could be huge. All right. But he did manage to save that Necrovirus yeah. for... But again, like between the burn and the potential for deadly raid, at any time Dave could uh, potentially finish him off. Hunting pack, the pickup for Anthony. So, oh, and yeah. oh, fork lightning, amazing yes. here because it gets rid of the biggest threat and does gets him down to eighteen. Uh, it's really, he's got to be very concerned. Yeah, that fork lightning was a really big pickup. Oh, okay. So that that's pretty good. A winged death from Anthony. So on the one hand, it doesn't get rid of something great, but he he see and again, if he'd attack with Kong last turn, there'd be one less, uh, you know, zombie to throw away to wing death. Right. Tribute. So and it's interesting. Yep. He chose not to activate the necrovirus with the wing death. I mean, admittedly, Correct. the zombies don't help him with all the attackers, but, like, he's in a bit of a race here, and, yep. you know, the zombies could have helped with that. 
Does he have another evil card in his hand for Necrovirus, or just hanging on to it? I don't think he does. So he's got Hunting Pack and one other card, which doesn't look like, which I think is actually um, a, a good card, not an evil yeah. card. A lot of good and evil mixing together in this match. Mythic monster they pick up for Dave. He's yeah, got Dave's that, got, still got that airborne. He's got a s health advantage, and he's got a card, hand, advantage. card and hand advantage. Um, but the the board itself looks relatively even. But you know, Dave's got a lot of momentum right now. Although hunting pack is uh, yep pretty nice here. It is just enough to take. And imagine care of the if he had a light. bunch of zombies with his wolves. <laughs> Six damage to the Angel of Light. So an another big swing of momentum here. Dave did get Anthony to play his coin first. So Dave, door is open for him to decide what he wants to do, what he thinks is best here. So uh, playing his pack alpha would uh, help deal with uh, some of the main ground threats uh, that he's facing. That um, Wing Death is looking a lot more annoying now that there aren't any huge airborne champions on Dave's side. Right. So Mythic Monster looks like it's about to come down. He's really thinking about it. It's halfway down, <laughs> and it's down. So he's trying to dig for a better answer. Smash and burn. Yeah. My, my, well, I thought he was going to go with the pack alpha there to go wide against the Wing Death, but he goes with the Mythic Monster. It's a good, it's a good yeah. answer for Kong, at least. I think he just drew a wave of transformation, I think, which isn't super useful at the moment. He is at, an, Anthony's on two cards. If I draw a wave right there, as powerful as the effect is, it also has draw two on yeah. it. I wouldn't be surprised if we see him draw two. Uh, yeah, especially since yeah. he has board advantage. I mean, not yeah. by a ton, but he does. Yeah. Yeah, I think he'd be in a lot better board state if he had those zombies in play. But, you know, it's the, he, he, I guess perhaps he's playing around mass removal from Dave. You know, something like an apocalypse or something. Dave. Oh, that's a yeah. great use of smash and burn. Yeah. He's winning the fight in the air and drawing two cards and getting smash and burn into his discard pile. Yeah, that's that, a, yeah, smash that's and a, burn, not just a draw to. Uh, I've seen in combat, I've seen all kinds of great smash and burns. That's a. That's, that's a one of the one. better ones I've seen. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And we know he has at least one wild card in his hand with pack alpha, so he can even fire that off as early as next oh, time. Oh, interesting. So he's sending it on a vital mission, which will gain Dave a lot of health, but it keeps the winged death alive. So, yeah, banish target champion. Its controller gains health equal to its offense. offense. Yep. Uh, and then that's it, though. That's no, no draw to because uh, Anthony targeted Dave's so, uh, card. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's... Wow, so I think he really that, uh, values that wing death. Yeah, like I, I'm okay with that play because with Dave only having two champions in play, none of them having airborne, the wing death has the potential to really dominate here, and you want to draw two on your opponent's turn with the wave of transformation, anyways. But boy, like, was it painful to give Dave all that health, and the wing death didn't get through. Yeah, and now with only one card in hand, I think we'll see Anthony draw to it that wave. <clears throat> yeah, I don't think he's got much choice. Yeah. Unless for some reason Dave does something on his turn that really Just swings the board st uh, state a lot. Um, but then then you're like down to no cards to a you know relatively equal board state. So uh, Actually, uh, Dave so picking up the Scaros Hound is great with all those little champions Yeah, and maybe play. because Anthony passed it earlier he said, I'm going to hold on to that Necrovirus because I know I have Hunting Pack in hand because of the Scaros. So that you know, that's could a good be point. another reason he might have. That might have been something he was thinking of, and we'll see it right here. Oh, Scaros for three is amazing wow. here, killing yeah. everything but the Kong, and doing three to Anthony at a time when yeah. you know with Flame Strike, and he now sees the Flame Strike because of Scaros. Oh, yeah. This um, is uh, so Anthony sees the potential doom he's dealing with. Yep. So Dave deciding whether after the three to use Smash and Burn on the Kong as well, that would allow him. Actually, already he can attack. Yes, because of the three damage on Kong, so this mythic, mythic monster, monster would actually finish Kong. So, 
he's basically forced to use the wave. Not, wow. Not as a draw to. Wow. Yeah. So he is in a, a load of trouble because he has no cards in hand. He's only at 12. His opponent has a lot of cards in hand, including Flame Strike, and has yeah. more wolves in play. Yeah. Like uh, Anthony's just saying, the top of my deck's going to save me. And if I was Anthony, I'd want, uh, especially right after the Scaros, I'd want an evil card here. Get that Necrovirus online. It's not an evil card, but it is a he Citadel. can get even. something back, at least. Play it right away. And Let's see what he chooses. When this, when Citadel Raven attacks, you may return target event card from your discard pile to your hand. So he could he take could, something he, like I think the Fires of Rebellion. Yeah, he, he also could choose a zero. I think he, he has could a, get the Necrovirus. I, I don't. I mean, yeah. he, perhaps you just take a draw to here, like the Wave of Transformation. Right. A redraw on a draw two seems fine as well. But Anthony, facing down four wolves and a cave troll. At 12. His life and a flame says, strike. Right, his life total says 12. We know it's four. He can't so take more than he four. He could take the vital mission with the plan of using it on one of his own champions after blocks. Oh, Wither's not terrible with four wolves in play. Oh, I guess. Well, so. He, uh, yeah, this the is The wave transformation choice. could just be the. I'll play it on your turn just to stay alive and hope to draw right. something better next turn. Permanently get rid of the cave troll and hope for another redraw. Probably the safest pick is the wave. It seems to be what uh, he's leaning towards. Although hunting towards. pack isn't terrible here. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, a lot of things would have to go right for Anthony here. Yeah. So he does take the wave of transformation, uh, which seems mostly like a I don't want to die to flame strike next turn play, but... There are a lot of things that could go with Flame Strike to win the game for Dave anyways. I mean, not necessarily in Dave's deck, but in general. Oh, he just took the Lash back yep. with his one gold. Because he knows Anthony has the wave, chooses not to overextend onto the board, Makes grabs his sense. Lash back as his coin, and... Okay, trade a wolf for wolf. Chooses to start oh, with okay. the cave troll. So right. Indeed. Either way, we'll see. So each person will get an extra wolf in play. And, and none of these wolves can attack. Right, right. So Anthony has a, you know, it looks like he has... Uh. Yeah, he's going to get, I mean, he's going to get a draw step here, but he is on the super back foot. <laughs> yeah. So suddenly, oh! Well, it's that's, not only that. If he remembers that the necrovirus, he necro can virus, get the zombies. He can st stack it so and the he zombies was just come. looking through his discard pile. I, I saw. I think he still has the necrovirus. I don't know. He chose not to. So yeah, I mean, obviously, the question is, did he choose to or did he forget? Because um, it seems like pretty good time to play it. Yeah. <laughs> and Dave goes with the urgent messengers. He has no, oh, yeah, he knows it. his opponent has no Flame strikes. Yeah, that's game one. Wow. wow. So, yeah, uh, I don't think the neck price would have mattered, and, and Dave had Drock in his hand as well. I mean, they, they, Anthony, uh, he just ran out of cards there. Right, yeah. I, I think that some of the most important things in Epic are drawing enough cards to give you options and to let you play a bunch of free cards and still have options, right? So you need to find the right balance between having a lot of card draw and having a lot of free cards. Exactly. And even though he had Consume and Wither there, those dark cards don't have Recycle. They don't replace themselves. And Anthony ran out of cards. And it was Dave was pressuring him the entire game from the very beginning. He couldn't even use that wave as a draw to. And he Dave played to... a lot of champions that had Tribute draw a card that kept his hand size high. Um, so, yeah, I, I think Dave just had a better balance of free and card draw where Anthony had a lot of free but not a lot of card draw and yep um, and that's and that's honestly what what makes zeros with recycle so powerful when it, when you see any zero that also comes with recycle yep. it's 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 an effect that allows you to get slightly ahead or stabilize but also not run out of cards yeah, it yeah. looks like the players are taking a bathroom break but so now they know what they're up against because they played one game Yes. And uh, so that might factor into their strategy for game two. Yeah. Uh, Anthony at first saw the Sage and was probably like, what's going on? But then he saw the Scaros. He saw the, the you know, he saw the loyalty two cards out of Wild. And these these guys, uh, they, they 
I think they did a really good job of avoiding each other's factions in the draft and building two really strong decks. And we got to see a lot of information cards that game. So, for example, Anthony now knows that Dave has Resurrection. He knows he's got Lash. He knows he's got Scaros. He knows he's got Flame Strike. You know, he yes. knows that uh, these are cards he needs to play around. And now Dave knows Anthony has Wither. He has <coughs> um, Consume. Yep. He has... Wave. Yeah, Wave. He has Apocalypse. He has Plague. Like, yeah. So, a lot of information there. So, yeah. um, when I first started drafting epic i took cards like wave of transformation and apocalypse super high because i'm like it blows up everything when i whenever i'm ready but like i my value for cards like that has gone way down and i really just really focus on champions with tribute good draw twos good free yes. cards and you know high quality removal especially ones that draw cards, you know, like Fires Rebellion or whatever. Right. Um, because, you know, it didn't matter that Dave could reset the board because you refill the board so quickly. Exactly. And um, and that's where you could take a board wipe or you could take a Kong or a Medusa right, right. or a Palace Guard. They not only deal with the threat, but also you get a threat. Those kind of cards really stand out as well. Right, yeah, like the, the Kong and the Lycomancer and mm -hmm. the Hunting Raptors, yes. the Noble Unicorn. These were the impact uh, cards you know, that we were seeing that game that made the game swing back and forth. I mean, there was definitely plenty of turns where it seemed like Anthony was almost taking control. Um, oh, er early there, yeah. Dave came out of the gates really fast. A Anthony stabilized. Anthony answered, yeah. And then just ran out of cards. Wasn't was really didn't it wasn't that he ran out of cards as much as Dave kept the pressure up so that Anthony didn't have a turn where he could draw to. We're about to start game two. <clears throat> Anthony will get to choose if he wants to be on the player of the draw. Almost always in competitive play, uh, Anthony will probably choose to be on the draw. We'll probably see Dave going first here again. Some players might be noticing Anthony yeah. wearing a Pluck University shirt. That's a tribute to how much his team likes the card Thought Plucker. Yes, yes. The Pluck University is is here this weekend, and uh, I'm going to guess they're going to probably play Thought Plucker tomorrow at Worlds. <laughs> I'm, well, sure they've, I'm sure they've brewed up quite a Thought they, Plucker they, deck. They certainly <laughs> played it last year, Yeah, uh, and, yeah. and it's a, still a good card. Yeah. It hasn't stopped being a good card. Even Dave, though, Dave has it in this dark draft, though. Yes. So... <laughs> And the format tomorrow for the championships will be a little different because we will be seeing some new cards introduced into the format tomorrow. Absolutely. With uh, Epic Pantheon. We'll see the first yeah. four packs of Epic Pantheon are available to the, to yes. the championship players. That's what, uh, yeah, 48 new cards. Wow, that's a great turn one for yep. Dave. It's, Probably the best you can ask for. It's hard to beat a turn one raging T-Rex. So yeah. That's got to be a little concerning for Anthony. Down one game and your opponent's starting off with a Raging T-Rex. Yeah. If you're on the play and you have Raging T-Rex, it is a great start. So both players mulligan twice. That's why they're both at 28. Let's see what Anthony has. So Anthony's going to draw two with his wave of transformation this time. Trying to make sure he keeps his hand size high this time. Yep. And Kong is an excellent yes, answer. That's an example, just like we talked about. Instead of using an apocalypse. Yeah, like remember he, last turn, right. he answered a Triceratops with a plague, and so suddenly he's behind a card. Right. Dave was able to follow it up with a Royal Escort and keep the pressure up. This is a very different game. <coughs> uh, the Kong there putting a lot of pressure back on Dave. Right, and the combination of Kong and Wave tr Transformation is approximately as efficient as the T-Rex. So the, the T-Rex was great for Dave, but Anthony managed to not fall behind. Yep. He didn't fall behind on cards or tempo because of the combination of that those two cards. Dave just has a draw to himself with Smash and Burn after the Kong. We might yeah. see a mythic monster here who likes to yeah. dance with Kong. Oh, he does have Scaros, so he's tempted to save his green cards. Sea Titan would be very strong here as well. Bouncing the Kong, but the Kong can't uh, target or right, destroy the Sea Titan on the back. Although it does limit Dave's uh, future plays if he does that, which yep. you know I'd be a little concerned about. Although the nice thing about Sea Titan is it's not a green card, so it keeps uh, yep. Scaros doing his thing. A lot of choices here for Dave. But I, I'm, full grip. I'm, I'm liking the chances of Mythic Monster hitting mm -hmm. the board. Indeed. Keeps yep. his hand size high, gives him a someone who can compete with the Kong. Cave Troll, a good pickup as well for Dave with a heavy wild hand here. 
Yeah, so Cave Troll obviously would be good for helping deal with uh, Kong, but you know also likes to be in your hand when you've got uh, Scaros, yep. the Hound of Draka, in your hand. Yeah. You can even have the you know, chump block with the Cave Troll, have it in his discard pile, play Scaros and get it back to hand, and use it with the Loyalty X, though. The nice thing really about sweet. the Kong there is, is it forces the tempo. Now, Dave had to use his gold first, uh, to because he can't ignore Kong, so that now leaves Anthony able to use his gold without Dave being able to respond. And he's thinking about Necrovirus here. I wonder if he's thinking about how he didn't use Necrovirus when it was in his <laughs> discard pile last game. Again, yeah. might not have mattered, but uh, yeah, definitely seemed like an oversight at the time. I also see a lot of players uh, turn the card horizontal and have all the other cards vertical in their mm -hmm, discard pile, mm -hmm. and they'll leave it like that. Um, just Makes as a reminder to themselves, yep. I, I know quite a few of the world's competitors that do that, Makes just because there's sense. so much to think about, and there's so many choices. And if you play, um, so uh, Epic has an uh, app that's in alpha right now, and if you're playing the app and you have a Necrovirus in your discard pile, your discard pile has a glow around it saying, hey, there's a card here that might in your discard pile that might matter, which I think is yeah. a cool feature. I've been playing the Alpha a lot, and uh, it's a terrific app. I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, it eventually coming out to the public to see what everyone can think, but uh, it's uh, one of my favorite mobile games. So he Necroviruses the Mythic Monster, and Roxas curses the Cave Troll. Wow, Roxas is cursing a Cave Troll when he knows his opponent's got a grip full of green. Well, I guess he doesn't know he's got that many, but he knows his opponent's got a lot of green cards in his deck. Yeah. That, that, I mean, wow, that, I'm not Roxas so sure Curse about is one of my favorite zeros, but Cave Troll is very strong against Roxas Curse. Yeah. yeah. And like yeah. his opponent's at 28, so getting a demon token in play doesn't seem like that big a deal right now. Yep. Word of Summoning from Dave. So, as you can see, so many zeros being fired off here. And this Word of Summoning is. But in the one case, you're giving up the draw to of Roxas Curse. In the other case, you're recycling with Word of Summoning. So, Word of Summoning is looking a lot better than Roxas Curse in this case. Because you didn't get enough value by uh, breaking a card that can come back, like the Cave Troll. It's like Dave playing that Word of Summoning uh, once, the, once the zombie. the zombie had attacked. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, I really like Word of Summoning as well. A zero Ooh. puts pressure and also recycles. Wing Death seems like a solid play here. So now, like, you either have to lose your potential blocker for the Kong or lose your bigger token. Uh, but he does have urgent messengers in hand, so I was gonna say, he's yeah. probably that, that. That's a pretty good answer to wing death. Anthony is definitely with the swing death, trying to get that Kong through. He and wants, yeah. The Scaros Hound of Draka is potentially going to be killing the wing death and the demon token, and getting a big buy on the board, and hitting Anthony for a decent amount. Yeah. So, the, especially if the urgent messengers uh, hits a couple more green cards, suddenly uh, it could be very exciting. <laughs> Dave is trying to decide whether to, to the wing's death to take the card that's already blocked or the smaller token. He goes with the demon. Oh, uh, you can, he's, he's done that to me twice now. <laughs> <laughs> he's messing Un with us. There he goes. That. Yeah, because there's still a lot of potential attacks that he's got to think <laughs> about. So I think Urgent Master just makes a lot of sense here. I mean, obviously, he could just flame strike it or something, but when you've got the hound in your hand, like, yeah, I don't think that's worth it. Draw two, put two, one one humans into play. That looks like one of them was top plucker. I didn't see the other one. Yeah, and uh, then takes the four from wing death and immediately, immediately loses exactly. one of those human tokens. But he has again chump blockers for the Kong. There goes the next one. That was just showing the power level of Urgent Messengers, a draw two that also, uh, you know, saved so, 13 from Again, the he didn't activate the Necromancer with the Winged Death, which, I mean, the Necrovirus, which is good in this case because of the Hound. Right. But interestingly, he didn't attack with the Demon token, which getting the Zombie token off the board seems incredibly relevant when you've got Kong and, and Winged wing death. death. And if he takes the four when you're already ahead, that seems good, too. So, yeah, that seems Anthony, very surprising. Anthony, maybe his hand, he's afraid of uh, a Blitz a coin champion out of Dave, keeping something back, but yeah, we'll have to see here. 
and interestingly, Anthony was incredibly aggressive with his zombie token last game, so like it's almost like an overcorrection, and because now it's just going to get swept aside by the the hound. Assuming that's what he decides to go with. He actually is down to just three wild in hand. Wouldn't take the demon at this point. But okay, he's heading in. I think yeah, this. He didn't get well, enough green off the urgent message. That necrovirus is is uh, is out of here. Yeah. He doesn't gain any life, but the Necrovirus is uh, banished. Yeah, Dave continuing to play a lot of free cards while keeping a huge hand size. And again, Anthony's hand size has dwindled a little bit. Yeah, because of cards like Keeper of Secrets and Course Ronger, uh, if you don't activate that Necrovirus, you also can lose it, which just happened. It's gone. Right, right. Again, it wouldn't have mattered because right. here the hound is going down. Yeah, true. But the hound will. Oh, he does have four. That's right. The cave troll. The cave is troll still in the discard pile. He will use it. He, which yep. again, like that, worked out really poorly for him. Yep. I mean, I can five. see in retrospect if you're trying to get the wing death to do some work, why it was a little bit more defensible to get rid of the cave troll. But this whole thing is yeah. blowing up in Anthony's face now. Yep. Looks like Dave not going with this. <clears throat> Smash and burn. Five from the five and the six. Not enough to take care of wow. that. 14. And now Anthony sees most of Dave's hand and sees the danger of what he's dealing with. That cave troll coming back. Yeah, again. This is uh to see. Anthony does Anthony does have a lot of board wipes in his deck. Uh we've seen plague, we've seen apocalypse. So Yes, but yeah. when you're behind on cards in hand and your opponent has a Draka Dragon too. Tyrant in his hand and the, and the Cave strike, Troll yeah. and the Flame Strike, like... Um, Dave has been keeping the pressure up here in Game 2, same as he did in Game 1. And, like, Wave of Transformation, like, okay, you get four and I get one, like, it's... Yeah. So he's digging with his ceasefire. There's the okay, play. Okay, so he did draw a board of... And he has a yep. few more cards in hand because he drew two off the ceasefire. Yeah, fire. yeah. Um, so the question is, does he have a good answer for Draka Dragon Tyrant if uh, if he wipes the board here? And Dave still has smash and burn in his discard pile, so... Dave's got a lot of resources yeah. here and and a lot of I think better options than Anthony has yeah. at the moment. Whenever I see something like this, it does it feels that from Dave's point of view, he knows he can just chomp block with the cave troll. So why is this Kong attacking? Well it looks like a board wipe from to, yeah, from Dave's point right, of view. Right, right. I mean obviously Anthony yep. could have like rage in his hand yeah. or something, but True. True. Yep. Just head and play. Yeah, I mean I, I think that Anthony doesn't have much choice. There. Oh, yeah. I, I think Plague's a, no a, a solid to. play, yeah. but he's no reason not to solidly attack. on his back foot now. Yeah. Because Dave's got a gold he can spend here, and he can play one. He can, like, play Thought Plucker. He can play Angel of Light. He's He's got multiple good, and indeed, yep. he's going with Angel of Light. And that's exactly what we're talking about between games one and two. As powerful as Plague and Apocalypse are, you put if you were playing your ambush. coin first, that means and Dave can he, put an ambusher into right. play. And he can attack... Force Anthony to deal with it, and if Anthony does, then he drops the dragon and attacks. Exactly. So you, but you, instead, you, Anthony yep. wisely takes it. But the question is, what if Dave passes here? What do you exactly. do, with Anthony? Do you pass and just hope to start fresh on your next turn? Yep. If you're ahead on board, uh, your opponent has to do something. And this angel, like he can just pass. Anthony's forced to do something, or he's taking five each turn. Yeah, that's definitely an interesting uh, dynamic about Epic is some you know you only get to spend one gold per turn and you usually have lots of opportunities and sometimes it's just quick to to pass and see if your opponent wants to do something and okay Absolutely. maybe none of us will play gold this turn that's fine I've got Angel Light and you've got nothing and I'm ahead twenty nine to eighteen yeah in a lot of competitive games when there's nothing on the board I've seen both players pass even though they both have a grip of cards neither one wanting to play play their coin first so yeah yeah I mean a lot of it, cat and mouse in that regard in in Epic I really like that. Yeah, and you especially don't want to be the first one to play a gold on your opponent's turn. Um, you know, it's it's a little safer to play the first gold if it's your turn. Yes. Uh, obviously, depends on what you're spending your gold on, but... Yeah, I agree entirely. Well, you know, just like Dave started this game with the T-Rex, he did play his gold first, but obviously that's an example of one you 
you do feel comfortable on your turn playing first. Right. And so, indeed, they did both pass their gold because uh, yep. Anthony started his turn. Drew for turn. You get a player so he does have a good answer in Fires of Rebellion for the Angel. Uh, still not an answer for the Dragon, although he could final task uh, something like yeah. Kong or something. If it came Much to safer to remove the Angel of Light on his turn. Again, less Punishers. There's lots of champions with Blitz, and that's why you never want to do it on your opponent's turn. He does have a Jin of the Sands in his hand, so he could just put out a large airborne blocker and then potentially even draw a card in his opponent's turn. Yeah. But there's a lot that can go wrong with that plan. Yeah. So indeed, he is Fires of Rebellion, as we talked about. He get Seven damage to target champion, draw a card. But his, again, forced to play his gold first. Let's we'll see what Dave has. So if Dave has another ambush champion, he's right back in the same yes. situation, knowing that that. And, and there indeed, it is. he does. The pressure and doesn't doing stop. Four to his dome. Like, this is really... Yeah. Um, Dave has not let up on the pressure. Dave's, That's the power of Ambush Yeah, champions. Dave's de deck is built very beautifully, and he's playing it really well. Like, um, he's he's keeping Anthony in really a lot of pressure and in a really difficult situation. So Anthony does have a free card to take a little bit of pressure off here because he's going right. to revolt and at least get a free blocker. So he's able to prevent the, four dam or the five damage... Yep. Without having to spend his gold first, knowing there's a dragon. But and and Dave also has a zero ready. He has an answer, an excellent answer, because he's going to efficiently. So his, and again, look how his zero is more efficient, because yes. Anthony spent a zero to get a blocker, but didn't draw a card. Dave is getting rid of the blocker, yes. drawing a card, and getting a champion. Yeah. So that's, again, D Dave's free card completely trumping Anthony's free card. Yeah, and that's why I think Dave was so excited early <laughs> in that draft when he saw Scaros the Hound and Wolf's Bite in the same pack. That that was a just a huge pack. He he did point at the Cave Troll, uh, realizing he didn't bring it back when he played the Pyromancer. Could have even I more. Suspect. Could even have even more pressure and, on the board. And but he still does have a lot of pressure in his deck. So, like, forgetting yeah. that could have yep. consequences. Dave, so, has, Dave has more wild coins in hand, though. I don't think he'll forget it next time. He's ready. Well, not, yeah, yeah. Not to mention if the dragon comes out. <laughs> yeah. Like he can use which, it as loyalty. Yeah. So Anthony looks like he's being forced to deal with the. Um, Still, the Pyromancer. while the Pyromancer is attacking, yeah, we're still in combat here. But that does mean that we're like, so the Kong is coming out and is going to deal with the, so, you know, maybe you get winged death there. Oh, no, I guess because the wolf, the wolf, yeah. Yes. So now the dragon is going to punish him. He should reveal that. Yes, yes there he, he goes. got the king yeah. troll. Uh, yeah. and, he's, and he's just showing him, like, yep, I've got flame strike in hand. Yep. <laughs> like, just in case you forgot. Yeah, and, and, and that final task, if Anthony doesn't have a way to give Kong Unbreakable, that Kong's going away at the end of turn. There it goes. Wow. Yeah. So the question is, can you gain enough health that that flame strike doesn't kill you? Yes, that's, yep, no. he doesn't, he knows the flame strike's in hand. If wow. he does any action. So Dave takes it down to zero. Yeah, congratulations, Dave. D Dave will now be playing in tomorrow's championship, and he's qualified for the digital championship. Uh, a a yep. great, great win for uh, Dave. Um, he's Anthony. got a few hours to put together his deck. He's got. A, <laughs> he's hope he's got some friends that maybe already qualified. I uh, look forward right. to seeing so Dave tomorrow. If he's been, <laughs> if he played the constructed qualifiers this week, it was without uh, Pantheon, and suddenly he right. finds himself playing the championship tomorrow with Pantheon. Yes. So he's uh, he's got forty eight new cards to look at and see what he wants to play. So, uh, tough loss for Anthony. He obviously played 